everybody. This is Jennifer and Tiffany, instructional coaches in Moffat County School District. You're listening to Pivot, Inspire, Elevate. This podcast is dedicated to helping you pivot instruction, inspire others, and elevate learners at all levels. We believe you should never stop growing, never stop learning, never never stop stop sharing. All right, welcome (laughs) to episode one. We are so excited. Um, So today we are talking about the category of context and our design area that we chose to start with for our bonus episode is building relationships. So there are three elements in building relationships. We chose the element 38, which I think is the first one. It's using verbal and nonverbal behaviors that indicate affection for students. So we're just going to highlight a couple strategies um, under that one. I thought it was weird that building relationships is something we talk about at the beginning of the year, but it's like element 38. It's the, it's the, one of the last ones. It's, I don't know. So we're learning. We, we are learning. Um, but I did read somewhere in one of the many books that we have about from Marzano that we should always start with the category of context when we yes. are um, choosing strategies to, to, improve. Yeah. So So. remember there's feedback, content, and context. Those are the three categories. So we are starting with context and we know just from, well, I think experience, (laughs) I'm not like this with Marzano, but I think I am because I've met him, (laughs) but we are starting with building relationships at the beginning of the year. Okay. All right. So our first strategy that we're going to talk about is giving students special responsibility or leadership roles. And when I first read this strategy, I, of course, with my elementary experience, I'm like, oh, that one is pretty simple, classroom jobs. But then you think, well, what what does that look like in middle school or high school? I'm pretty sure that there aren't very many classrooms that give classroom jobs. Yeah, you don't have an electrician in high school (laughs) and a postman. (laughs) Although, can I say... Um, <laughs> there's nothing wrong with doing that in middle school, no. high school. Um, it's, I think it's all about the way you approach yes. it. They want, they want, they do. It's want. their classroom. It makes mm-hmm. them feel like they belong. I think that's the point, right? Yep, that is. The it's point. not your classroom and you're welcome in my classroom. It's mm-hmm. we're doing this together. How can we work together? Yep. Yeah. It's exactly what it is. Mm-hmm. So before we get too deep into this strategy, let's talk a little bit about why. Why would we even attempt to give students responsibilities or leadership roles? So first of all, we talked a little bit about it in our little dialogue that we just had, but you're building that classroom community. So it's making everyone feel like it's our classroom. It's not mine. You're not coming into my room, just like um, Tiffany just said. It's We're developing that culture. Um, another reason, um, it gives kids a chance to explore things that they might not explore on their own. So if we were to assign a role, for example, what was one of the examples you just did? That we well, were saying- like electricians. We had postman, you know. So, so um, electrician, we'll take that one. Turning the lights on and off. That's our electrician. <laughs> yeah. Just a fancy name for um, for a job because we're trying to get that vocabulary. I, I call them I call them the light guy. <laughs> then I realize who might have to, <laughs> might, might have to give it a different name. But um, so that's probably not a good example for me to share <laughs> about. Um, so here's one. Here's one something. that I wouldn't. I would have no matter what grade I would teach. No matter what grade. I don't know what you would call it, but I called them my my finder. Like when I teach, I, I might be a little animated. So I would leave things everywhere. Like I'd lay my iPad down, my Apple pencil. I'd, ha- I'd take my glasses off to make a point and I would lay them everywhere. So every day I had to have somebody that was like listening, but keeping track of my stuff. And I know that I would even have that in high school. Like you're on glasses duty today. So wherever I lay them down, you have to find them. And high school kids, I mean, there's some that wouldn't, but you're not going to pick that kid, but they want to. Right. 
I see a cursor on my face. Okay. Oh, I thought that was just on your screen. <laughs> well, it was my, right here. I don't know if it's recording that or not, but it, in our view, there was a cursor. <laughs> okay. I thought she just said on her screen. <laughs> so anyway. <laughs> All right, down to business. At any rate, okay. So at the older levels, middle school and high school, I guess maybe it's even materials. They can upper um, elementary. You could to up the ante a little bit, have people apply for certain jobs. Mm -hmm. So then you get the practice of filling out an application, and then possibly depending on how you um, take it from there, doing an interview. So. You can make it as big of a process or as small of a process as, as you are comfortable with. I've seen people pay employees too. They have, and we don't have checkbooks anymore, but they had that kind of system. Their and token then, economy. Yes. Yeah, uh -huh. mm -hmm. And then even in the middle school and high school, I, that's actually where I saw it. And then people have adapted it younger. Yeah. So you could take this really far and incorporate it in every aspect of your classroom or just simply, okay, what roles do I yeah. do every day that I could be freeing up my time by having the kids perform that? So, or ask the kids, what would help our classroom run smooth? Mm -hmm. How, you know, yep. who's willing to take that on? So we've got lots of options for this strategy. Um, one other thing I want to talk about before I let Tiffany talk about her strategy would be, um, so the difference between responsibility, giving someone a responsibility versus a leadership role. So a responsibility might just be, it's your responsibility to take care of me and find my glasses when I set them down at lose them, right? Correct. So it's just your responsibility. <laughs> but a leadership role might yeah. be just a different type of job that is, that they have to work for to get and they are showing that they are capable of of having that responsibility they, yeah they're they are, so if you're thinking about the younger grades there are some kids you can send down the hall by themselves mm -hmm. to go get the lunch baskets your your lunch duty and there are other kids that aren't quite ready yet right so yeah. all right that okay. one's pretty easy to do all right okay so it's funny because Jen's looking at the camera. I try to look at the camera because we're talking with you, but we're also having a conversation. So I feel like I'm like, Jen's so smart. <laughs> so another strategy within this element of building relation or context of, I mean, <sighs> category of context, area of building relationships, element of nonverbal and verbal is using humor. And we've all done it. So, you know, when we think about verbal and nonverbal, obviously we have cartoons, we have pictures, we have silly things, and we have the verbal, the making jokes and using humor in our classrooms. So when we think about all the stress that all of us have been under, like society, um, teachers and kids in our profession, that laughing, I have read that laughing is the best form of therapy. And, and it is. It's, it's an emotional release. And so um, we want to be able to ha have kids have an escape valve. We want our classrooms to be a friendly place. And humor makes it feel friendly. It shows that the teacher cares. It shows that um, we understand kids. It also, it lowers our stress. It increases our immune system. Humor is one of the highest forms of, of um, intelligence, too, when we're thinking about puns and plays yep. on words. I mean, there's a lot of critical thinking to understand humor. So obviously, you got if you've got the younger grades, you can't. You have to think about your age level, right? Knock, knock jokes on the younger ones are still <laughs> even hard for little ones. You have to think about those. Yes. So... When we think about humor, we're thinking about it's playful, it's witty, it can be affectionate. There's always that opposite side when we think about pitfalls. So we have to be careful of that and we'll come back. So one example of humor, I always, we can tease kids. Teasing that doesn't hurt, teasing that doesn't make fun of. So kids would often ask me um, during certain times of day, can I read a book? And I'm like, hmm, 
if you must. I mean, don't we want kids to read, right? But I would ask, I would act like it was this big imposition, like, oh God, all right, go ahead. And they would think that was hilarious. Um, other things like, um, Oh, I've watched, what is that TikTok where somebody's crying all the time? That's that emotional leaf. Yes. And they're like, and they're like, are you crying? No, I'm, I'm laughing. And it is, it's an emotional release. So we want to have those, those times. We can put humor in assignments. We can put silly questions in there. You can have a funny topic. We've seen those too, where they put a random question in a test yes. that has nothing to do with anything. That's lighthearted. I've seen people at all levels use um we've been to conferences where they use props mm -hmm. um i remember one conference we went that she every time she taught a new spelling rule or some kind of rule she put on a lab coat do you remember that i don't well, remember what conference it was but i do remember her doing yeah that, so there's sure. there's you could i had a teacher in high school that and of course it went through if you were one of the last classes you already knew but every time he had a monkey hidden somewhere in the room you knew there was going to be a pop quiz so he would hide it for every every grade but you already knew after first but i mean there are things like that right you can use those props and and that was fun and clearly he didn't care that by the last class we already knew there was going to be a quiz but um those were those were fun i a lot of people play music coming in i know that's not humor but it could be well, if you're, if you're dancing, <laughs> no, because Jen, me, Jen I, really <laughs> likes that. Jen plays music and dances. I, I see it all the time. She just doesn't show it. Uh -huh. uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes I would like, yes. oh, I remember this. <laughs> so in second grade, I had, I like, I like music. I went to a lot of concerts. I put Chicago as a, as a, as a ringtone. And I, I didn't, I, could we even silence our phones back then? I don't know. I think we could always silence our phones. Well, I probably didn't know how, because I was one of the last ones to get a cell phone. It had this little pink chocolate. It played Chicago. And, or no, it played, it played Earth, Wind, and Fire. You're a shining star. So every time my phone would ring, the class would stop and start singing, you're a shining star. It kind That's of funny. became our class thing. And and I wouldn't answer it because we just wanted to hear. Well, I wouldn't answer because I was teaching, but we also wanted to just hear the song. They, it was a great brain break. And I didn't even know we were doing that. And it was funny because then we got right back to work because yep. it's all how you handle stuff, right? Yep. And it doesn't, doesn't have to be a distraction. It does not Humor have to be a distraction. Just incorporate. I think it can also turn a bad situation into something funny. Yep. So you have a kid that's thrown a book. And I've done this before. And I wait just a second. I take a breath, trying to think. I could lay into that kid, but I really, I don't want to pick a fight with that kid today because if you pick a fight, you got to win it. And I do not have the energy to win it right now. So I turned around and slammed a book down. And I'm like, we could have done that together, but you didn't give me enough warning. So next time when we're going to do it, we need to do it together. At least count to three or let me know. I mean, he just had this look on his face like, Oh, it totally diffused the situation. Nobody really <laughs> laughed, but it diffused the situation, right? I found humor in it, so I was calmer, even if they didn't. Right. <laughs> it made me calmer. <laughs> I think the pitfalls come, if we're going to talk about pitfalls, is so when you start, um, you might have silly names for kids. You got you got to make sure that they are okay with it. Yes. When you start having a lot of humor and doing things, your kids are going to have humor. When you start teasing and you know that you're not teasing in a hurtful way, kids will start teasing. They don't know the difference yet at any age. And so we have to say, wait a minute, let's think about that one. It's great that we're playful, but that might be degrading or that sounded a little biting. Kids get a little into the sarcasm, like, like we have to be careful because with other adults, we might go, you yeah, think? And we know we're <laughs> kidding, but if we say that to a kid, that could come across as sarcasm. So we just have to t teach kids how to, how to have fun and have humor in a playful way. Right. Correct. Okay. I'm just, I'm checking with her because she knows She's making all. sure that what she said was correct. I, that's, that's one of my pitfalls. <laughs> I have to make sure I check everything through Jen. Was that sarcastic? I do. I do. I say, is that okay? <laughs> Can I say this? <laughs> It's too late. You already did. <laughs> it's too late. I said it. You All already right. Said it. So those are just a couple of the strategies you can, there's tons of strategies 
to um, build relationships. And it's a lot of nonverbal and verbal. But. So we are um, asking that you guys share any classroom jobs or responsibilities or leadership roles that you've done or humor or humor things that have worked like like the book drop it doesn't have to be funny to kids sometimes it just has to i could share another one too that i just remembered that <laughs> email me if you want to know one i used to use in kindergarten okay <laughs> Oh boy. Uh, it was fun. Uh. <laughs> it was all in fun. Nobody got hurt. It helped me. That's that's what's important. Okay. So we're asking that you share funny or serious experiences, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay. So thanks for listening to Pivot, Inspire, Elevate. With, and, yeah with Tiffany and Jennifer. So if you enjoyed this episode, um, you can hit subscribe. You can also hit the bell like everybody says with YouTube. So, you know, when we put out a new episode, I'm hoping they get better as we get better. <laughs> this was episode number it, one. This was episode number one. <laughs> so um, you can also go to the Tech Lounge website, which will be linked um, to check out any other resources that we have and we'll and we'll have the links to all of our episodes yes. there too. Yep. So, yeah. So we'll see you next time. Okay. So remember, remember never, never stop growing, never stop learning, never stop, learning, never stop